In a previous video, I traced the E85 fuel pathway in Greet Excel, following its total well-to-pump energy result upstream to the feedstock components that make up the fuel. Now I'm going to trace the E85 fuel pathway through Greet.net from its well-to-pump results to its feedstock components. Tracing pathways in Greet Excel requires deciphering formulas and references and which inputs are used to calculate the values that go into the final result, whereas tracing pathways in Greet.net requires clicking through the interconnected pathways that make up a fuel and then tracking results. You'll find that well-to-pump pathways in Greet.net are often comprised of sub-pathways that output a product that is used in the well-to-pump pathway, and I'll explain more about this later in the video. I'll start by opening the pathway that produces E85 fuel and moving upstream to see the pathways that produce the feedstocks for E85. Then I'll copy process results into an Excel table to show how these results add up to the total pathway results. Note that in this video I'll be using Greet 2015. In the WTP pane, I'll open the E85 pathway. The main output at the far right is E85. Then moving left, there's a transportation process representing E85 distribution. Then a stationary process representing E85 blending. Then there's a yellow colored upstream pathway supplying the gasoline blend stock component of E85 and a peach-colored upstream mix supplying the denatured ethanol component. To trace upstream from here, we'll have to investigate the gasoline blend stock pathway and the denatured ethanol mix. Let's first check out the ethanol mix. I'll right-click on the mix and select Navigate to Mix. In the mix that appears, there are three pathways going into the mix, but ethanol denatured produced in the U.S. accounts for 100% of the mix. So I'll search for that pathway in the products list, and then I'll select the pathway. Here the main output at the right is denatured ethanol. There is a stationary process for blending ethanol and gasoline blend stock, then upstream pathways for ethanol and gasoline blend stock. Now it happens that the same gasoline blend stock is used to denature the ethanol product and combine with the denatured ethanol to make E85 and I'll investigate that gasoline blend stock shortly. Before I continue tracing ethanol upstream though, I just want to make note that here is an example of sub-pathways in Greet.net. The gasoline blend stock pathway produces a product that is used twice in the E85 well-to-pump pathway. These sub-pathways serve as building blocks that can be customized or used multiple times in a well-to-pump pathway. And while this organizational feature adds an element of detail and specificity to some pathways, it can make tracing those pathways kind of confusing. So don't be discouraged if you find it difficult to follow this tracing exercise. You can always watch the video again or trace the pathway on your own to make more sense of it. But with that, I'll follow the ethanol upstream a bit further by navigating to the next ethanol subpathway. The pathway for ethanol produced in the U.S is primarily a blending step for the average ethanol produced in the U.S. And the pathway also has a transportation process representing the ethanol transport to a bulk terminal. By default, that average ethanol is 100% corn grain ethanol. And I can check that by right-clicking in the pathway, display frame, and selecting edit this pathway. An editor window opens and I can click on the connector arrow next to the 100% ethanol input and see that it leads to ethanol production from corn. I'll close the editor window, then navigate to the ethanol from corn pathway. The ethanol production pathway has two outputs. One is available before distribution and the other includes distribution. Once again, we see the utility of the sub-pathway organization here. By availing two different output streams for the same product, this ethanol production sub-pathway can be used in a wider variety of well-to-pump pathways, and a user can specify which output to use. In my case, distribution occurs later in the E85 pathway, so my output bypasses distribution here. 
Upstream from the output is a blending process that represents the U.S. industry average ethanol production from corn. The average uses dry mill ethanol production without corn oil extraction, dry mill with corn oil extraction, and wet mill ethanol production. And corn production is the upstream pathway feeding into each of the three ethanol production processes. Here's where I'll end tracing the ethanol component of E85. Now I'll look into the gasoline blend stock component. I'll navigate back to the original E85 pathway. Then I'll navigate to the gasoline blend stock pathway. Again, there are two outputs, and again my output bypasses the distribution process because distribution occurs downstream for E85. There is a transportation process for gasoline blend stock transport to a bulk terminal, then a gasoline refining process, and a crude oil upstream mix, which I'll view. The mix shows just one pathway called crude oil average for use in U.S. refineries, so I'll open that pathway from the products list. Here the main output is crude oil, there's a storage process, and a blending process that combines shares of different crude pathways. This is as far as I'll trace the gasoline blend stock component of E85, so I'll summarize the series of pathways that make up E85 in Greet.net. For the ethanol component, corn grain is fermented into ethanol via three different production processes and the ethanol products are then blended according to a national average. That combined ethanol is used in another pathway that combines ethanol made from various feedstocks into an average U.S. ethanol production process, though by default the average is 100% corn grain ethanol, and then the ethanol is transported to a bulk terminal. After that, the ethanol is used in a pathway along with gasoline blend stock to produce denatured ethanol, and that goes to a mix where it makes up 100% of the denatured ethanol that is eventually blended into E85. Now for the gasoline blend stock component, there are a number of crude oil recovery processes combining into a U.S. crude oil profile, which goes into a mix of which it comprises 100% of the crude. That mix is used in a gasoline refining process that produces gasoline blend stock, which then goes to a bulk terminal, and from there is blended into E85. It can be a little tricky keeping track of all the pathways that connect to each other, but the graphical representations of each pathway make Greet.net a bit easier to use than Excel when tracing a pathway. Now let's review how to identify individual process results. If you remember from past videos, you can right-click in the results frame and select Copy All Values. Then you can open an Excel spreadsheet and paste the results there. I already set up a spreadsheet for this exercise, so I'll paste in my results for the E85 output. Now I'll go through the displayed pathway and copy and paste the process results. The results for each process that I copied over include all upstream inputs up to and including that process. So if I want to see the direct isolated results for just a single process, I have to subtract out the results from the preceding downstream process, and I'll show that now. If you do this, make sure each emission or energy input matches between the two columns, as well as all the units or you'll have to rearrange things until they match. So now I've isolated the results for just the stationary process for blending denatured ethanol and gasoline blend stock. I was able to do a simple subtraction because the functional units were identical for the two processes. It's much more complex if the functional units are different. 
The next process results in my spreadsheet are for gasoline blend stock in units per 1 million BTUs of that fuel, and then denatured ethanol in units per 1 million BTUs of that fuel. So I can't simply subtract process results from the next downstream process results. What you can do in this case is replicate how Greet Excel uses lower heating values and blending ratios to calculate unit list proportions for each upstream fuel. This is pretty complicated, but you can dig in more if you'd like by reviewing the total energy result for E85 in Greet Excel that I discussed in the video that traced that pathway. For demonstration, I was able to parse out the greenhouse gas results for gasoline blend stock and denatured ethanol using this method, but I'll just leave it there for now. I started copying the E85 pathway process results all the way back to corn production and crude recovery with each new pathway on a different worksheet. I won't go through all of the results, but if you're interested, you could try to calculate all of the process results to see their contributions to the sum totals. We'll soon post a video exploring well-to-wheel results in Greet.net, extending the E85 pathway to the WTW pane, so stay tuned for that. Also, there may be more videos tracing pathways through Greet Excel and Greet.net, and if you have suggestions for pathways, you can send them to me or the Greet development team. That's it for now, and thanks for watching.